the politicians in America heat up and William Barr sits before them. My name is Todd. I want to thank you for tuning into the Teal Jack channel. I greatly appreciate you taking time out of your day to watch one of my videos. It really does mean a lot to me that you spend time to view what I have to say or to even listen to me. So today I am discussing what took place yesterday. Um, it was William Barr showing up before the House Judiciary Committee. And I must say that uh, I was appalled. Uh, you're, uh, those who watch my videos are probably not surprised that I'd say that statement, considering I seem to stay, say it quite a lot these days. But yeah, I was appalled. Uh, the Democrats are not living up to what I would view a politician should live up to. In other words, they're not living up to the standard that I believe they should be living to. You know, they call William Barr under a um, threat of a subpoena and impeachment to come sit before their committee. And so he shows up. And what do we get is we got one side and the other side. And one side asks him questions and allows him to answer. One side asks him questions and if he starts to answer and they don't like where he's going, they shut him off and instantly say, reclaiming my time. And they yell at him. It was utterly despicable. And if you're wondering who the side was that was screaming, recalling my, ta ta my time, it's the Democrats, or as I like to call them, the Demorats. Or as I like to call them, the destructive device of America. Or as I like to call them, the destroyers of America. The list of D words goes really long with these people. The disgraceful people of America is another good one. Because they are literally a disgrace. And I just really wish that there would be more people in America that would be absolutely ashamed of what these politicians did. You call a guy, the Attorney General, to sit before you. You ask him questions, but what you're mostly doing is you are wanting to lecture him because you disagree with how he's running the country. And you want to say that he's just the puppet of Donald Trump. And all of those things were shown to be completely false yesterday. And they are an absolute disgrace to America and what America stands for. You bring this guy before you and you ask some tough questions. He starts the answer. You don't like what he says, so you instantly get angry and you shut him off. And if he continues to try and answer the question, then you get even more boisterous. You start yelling. I mean, it was despicable. I actually watched well over four hours of it yesterday. I, I got so fed up at the end when, you know, because the way it worked is... Democrat asked questions, Republican, and it went back and forth. Democrat, Republican, Democrat, Republican. And I basically stopped watching once we hit Democrat, 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 Democrat. Because it wasn't that they actually wanted him to respond. They just wanted to grill him on things based on false lies. Like the prime example. Portland was sh constantly being brought up yesterday. I'm so glad our beloved disgusting city was the forefront of national politics yesterday. Uh, what a shame. What a shame for Portland. What a way to advertise Portland. But the bottom of the line is, is you had them pitching that these are peaceful protesters. That the federal government is terrorizing in the city. 
And it's so abundantly clear it's not. Anybody with a brain between their two ears can see what's taking place in Portland is not, I repeat, not peaceful protesters. And so they tried multiple tactics to get William Barr to, I guess, change what he what they're doing. In other words, maybe pulling the federal officers out. And, you know, he did state kind of directly that they wouldn't be there if the state of Oregon and the stupid mayor of Portland, although he didn't use the term stupid mayor, I'm throwing that in there, would actually do their job and allow the police to police the community. Then they wouldn't have to be there guarding the building. But he also stated that we've had 60 plus days of rioting where these people have been attempting to burn the building down. They're violent to the officers who are just guarding the building, throwing bricks, Molotov cocktails, fireworks, shooting their eyes with lasers. In some cases, I've heard they're being hit with pellets from pellet guns. They're being hit with high-powered slingshots. And you want to call them peaceful protesters? I'm sorry. Those people are deserving everything the officers are throwing their direction. Rubber bullets. Uh, Cap-stun paintballs. Hitting them with pepper spray. Hitting them with tear gas. And yeah, Ted Wheeler got hit with tear gas. Joanne Hardesty got hit with tear gas. They deserved it. They're down supporting violence. And if you're going to be a part of that crowd, you better expect what comes your direction. But it was absolutely despicable watching these people yesterday because they actually just seem like a bunch of whiners. Like they're a bunch of babies crying because they're not getting their way. They're throwing their temper tantrum. And of course, they wanted to throw the buck and have it land on Donald Trump's doorstep. And, you know, quite honestly, William Barr wasn't having it. You know, I've, I've not been a huge fan of William Barr. I believe he was wrong on several cases. I believe he's wrong on how he views uh, Roger Stone's case. That was quite obviously a case where the the deck was stacked against Roger Stone before he ever entered the courtroom. And it's not that the crimes he committed, it's who was overseeing the case. The judge appeared to be extremely biased, not allowing evidence that potentially could have exonerated him, and then having a biased jury, and then refusing to remove those who showed obvious bias against Roger Stone. So I don't agree with Barr on that. I've not agreed with Barr's opinions surrounding the bump stock ban that Trump put forth. That's completely unconstitutional. And I would say first time in U.S. history where a the government says the good that you purchased you must destroy or you'll go to prison and receive a felony charge. So I don't like everything William Barr's done. I don't like the fact that he got into that position and Hillary Clinton still hasn't been brought up on charges on the numerous felonies she committed. So I'm not overly satisfied with William Barr. And in fact, I wish Donald Trump would have selected somebody like, oh, I don't know, Trey Gowdy. Yeah, much better choice. But... At least William Barr is trying to use the office justly. And that is, the Justice Department is supposed to be blind and not look at somebody. Based off their political point of view. They look at them based off the crime they commit, and then they go after them for the crimes they commit. So at least he's doing that. But he's still not my first choice. But anyway, whether I like the guy or not, the way he was treated by the Democrats was with utter disrespect. There's another D word for those Democrats. Bunch of disrespectful loons is what they were. And it was just quite amazing. 
quite amazing to see. And they are absolutely despicable. Ah, another D word for you. Destructive, despicable, disrespectful. And the D words go on. That describe these people that sit in the highest offices in America. And it's appalling. But four hours you're hearing these guys grill him. And not allowing him to answer. And you know, the Republicans did what I would consider the honorable thing. And in those some of those situations where the Democrats wouldn't allow him to answer, the Republicans utilized some of their five minutes to allow him to respond to those questions that the Democrats wouldn't allow him to answer that they asked him. But I know why they cut him off, because they didn't, wouldn't like his answer. They didn't like his answer. And they didn't want to hear his answer. All I wanted to do is use this as a political stunt to try and keep the Trump administration from getting reelected. And speaking of the Trump administration, you know, they haven't been my cup of tea either. But our options are slim. You've got the guy who can't remember what his left foot did five minutes ago. And then you got the guy who's running for office who's actually, let's see, uh, made the economy better until the virus. Uh, he's built the wall like he said he would do. Uh, black unemployment rate was the lowest our country has seen. Uh, the list goes on. He's done great things for America. Oh yeah, deregulate. Uh, yeah, uh, gave you a tax cut. Yep. The list go on. Donald Trump has done a lot of good things for America. Hasn't done everything right, and I haven't supported him on everything. But for the vast majority of his presidency, he's done good for America. Uh, it's quite obvious, he loves America. And he loves America first, as it should be. And not what these leftists on the street are trying to do. And, and they're rioters, they're not protesters. They're riotous insurgents. And they're trying to destroy America and the values America stands for. And that's what they're doing on the street. They're not out trying to reform police. Because if these Democrats really believe that, then they would have signed the bill that Senator Scott put forth. That would have brought some police reform. Now, as I've said in the past, I believe there are certain grounds where our police do need some reform. Because there are plenty of videos on YouTube that show police officers violating the Fourth Amendment. And pulling people over for ridiculous things and pulling them from their cars and keeping them on side the road for long minutes, 30 minutes, 60 minutes, sometimes greater. While they get a police dog to walk the car and then they come back and report the police dog uh, alerted to the car and said, now we must do a search. And then they spend who knows how much more time on the side of the road pulling the car all apart, ultimately to find no drugs in the first place. And ultimately sending the, the driver on his way, in some cases even without a ticket. But because he was from out of state, justified pulling him over. So yeah, we do need re police reform. How about all the videos coming out of Nevada of people driving, ex driving at extremely high rates of speed like the one I watched yesterday that took place back in, I think it was May of 2019, where a guy in a white uh, Dodge Challenger was pulled over for a speed of 155 miles an hour. And then the judge ultimately drops that down to a park standing violation of just a couple hundred dollars. So we do need police reform. But I think some of that police reform is even in these judges actually upholding the law. And actually charging these people and convicting them for the crimes that they get. So we do need police reform. We need, I would say, a little more police accountability. Not just to each other. But to the American people as well. So that some of these offers that you see on YouTube uh, telling people to... 
stop videotaping my traffic stop and then threatening them with an arrest because you're interfering with my traffic stop and the list goes on of these things they say to these people and they threaten them when the people have every right to be where they're at and they have every right to videotape their traffic stop and those people need to be re-educated so we do need more police accountability in that light where a citizen actually has a justified complaint and the officer will actually receive some sort of disciplinary action. Now, I don't think in most cases these, the disciplinary action needs to be that these officers lose their job, but they do need to be re-educated on what the Fourth Amendment is, what the Fifth Amendment is, what the rights are of the U.S. citizen to stand and videotape whatever it is out when they're outside. So we do need that. We do need more police reform. But the abolition of police, it's ridiculous. We saw what happens when that takes place. You can look no further than that Chaz slash Chop, where you had sexual assaults up, three people shot, two were killed, absolute unruly lawlessness, an establishment of a government up there, if you would, where the firearms are just passed out to the people, violating federal firearms laws. And all of that was done without ever asking the business owners, the property owners, and the people that lived in that area if this is what they wanted. So when police left, it became utter anarchy, utter chaos. In some ways, how I picture the wild, wild west may have once looked like. And now we're putting this into a modern day society. And this is what the anarchists, this is what Antifa, this is what the extreme left wants for America. The destruction of America and the values it stands on. And these Democrats yesterday played into their hands. And they were singing the praises, so to speak. Because they could not at all state that these were violent protesters. They wanted to blame Trump. They wanted to blame William Barr for the actions of the federal officers. Instead of throwing the buck where it lands, and that's on the rioters in downtown Portland. And in some cases, the rioters across our country. Because Portland's not the only lone case where all this is taking place. I just... These people are out of their mind. They absolutely are out of their mind. Anyway, I've rattled on for too long, but I wanted to give you a few minutes of how I felt yesterday went so that if you didn't watch the four hours, you wouldn't have to. And by the way, if you want to see what took place yesterday, just pull up one Democrat, pull up one Republican, and you'll get a feel exactly how yesterday went. And people like Jerry Nadler and Jeffries and the knucklehead from up near Seattle, Yapala or whatever her name is, they should all be ashamed of themselves. Absolutely ashamed of themselves. Jerry Nadler's open statement, check it out. Lie after lie after lie after lie after lie. And then, I highly recommend watching the open statement of Jordan of Ohio. Anyway, those are my thoughts. Leave your comments below. I'd love to hear from you. Take care. God bless. We'll see you next time. Hi, I want to thank you for taking time out of your day to watch one of my videos. Please hit the like button below, and if you would, hit the subscribe link up here. And take some time to watch one of my other videos. Thanks again, and have a wonderful day. God bless, and take care of yourself.